Hello everyone, my name is Anuj Pashel. I'm a final year MBBS student at Government Medical College Nagpur and in this video I'll be reacting to Dr. G, one of the movies which came out last year and it is currently trending on Netflix. I watched this movie like two weeks ago and I thought this would be a fun idea to make a video about it and tell the general audience what is actually happening in the movie as a medical student. Nothing in this video should be considered as medical advice and second of all we are all just having fun and lastly most importantly spoiler alert because I'm going to be analyzing some scenes from Dr. G so if you plan on watching the movie you should be careful. So without any further ado let's go. So the basic premise of the movie is that there is this guy who really wants to be an orthopedician but instead he gets placed in gynecology. As a man he struggles being in the gynecology department because it's a department which predominantly has females. So it's a story about he how he tackles this difference between orthopedics and gynecology and finally actually embraces becoming a gynecologist. <laughs> Competitive so he's talking about his girlfriend not being able to study with him because he gets competitive. Uh, so personally, I've known a lot of my seniors who were couples who studied together. It is it might be a problem very specific to him, but usually what I see is if you study together uh, with somebody else, it actually increases your productivity quite by a lot. Whenever you go to a medical library, for example, I go to my college at GMC Nagpur and I find that there is a lot of different couples who are sitting together and they are studying. So yes, this is very, very common in medical field. And therefore, of course, breakups are also very common. The person on the phone call is actually advising ki it doesn't matter what you do, you cannot determine what will be the sex of the baby, which is a very common thing that people outside of the medical field are confused about. Like, I've personally myself heard a lot of rumors that uh, so this is the very first scene of the movie where this guy he walks into a labor room uh, where he sees his senior delivering a baby and uh, this is a labor room as you can see which is attached to a ward which is usually the case in most of the medical colleges. This lady is wearing something like this but uh, in our colleges most of the patients who are admitted in the labor ward are given gowns so that it will be easier to deliver the baby once the labor pain starts and the cervix is dilated fully. Uh, what you can also notice is that this guy just blindly walks into the labor room so you cannot just go inside the labor room it is supposed to be a sterile environment because once the baby is delivered you have to keep the environment pretty clean so that uh, the baby does not get infections. Another thing is that uh, this person is not at all wearing an apron or whatever. He is just walking into the hospital like a normal person so which is like something which we learn very early like in second year or first year itself we will learn that uh, whenever you are present in the hospital you have to wear an apron compulsorily no matter what. At home you are not supposed to wear an apron but I wanted to make a video in it so it's like Ben Karakawar Kushni. Suction cup to jaldi or fetal distress lag raha Fetal distress usually means that the heart rate of baby is less than 100. That basically means that the baby needs to be delivered really fast because if the heart rate is low then there is poor oxygenation, there is a lot of complications of fetal distress. Suction cup is a device, it's called as a vacuum and that vacuum is very commonly used to deliver the baby. You might remember a scene from 3 idiots where they create that vacuum to deliver the baby. This is called as instrumental delivery. There are two types of instrumental delivery. There is forceps and there is vacuum. So in here vacuum is being utilized for delivering the baby. There are a lot of prerequisite conditions that need to be present in order for you to perform an instrumental delivery so the cervix should be fully dilated the head should be at station 2 or more than that so yes all of that if present you can definitely go ahead with the instrumental delivery but the consent of the patient is re required Mom, Dr. Uday Gupta, first year 10 late Shagun ka aur so this person is supposed to be the HOD of gynecology department and he, this person is 10 days late for the joining so this procedure where the doctor comes and looks at the patient is called as a round and usually rounds happen every morning, evening, afternoon, every time a round is going on. So basically we are ensuring that the patient is doing good, whatever we have prescribed is actually going into him and that uh, we don't need to take any steps for the emergency. So the round is basically a patient follow up but the doctor is going to the patient. This is the exact scenario that happens in a round like there will be 10-15 people, there will be a lot of junior residents as well as interns plus there will be senior professors as well as head of department usually after the time of 10 and in the morning they will be going to each and every patient reviewing what their file is what the current status is and it's the it's the job of the junior resident to tell the complete clinical history of the patient as well as the present condition of the patients in the summarized way to their senior and their senior then recommends what are the treatment options that we're going to be doing right now so as you can see uh, there's a lot of studying going on in the medical field even after you are done with your mbbs ms md all of these are extremely difficult and you have to study a lot much more than you did for neat ug but for all the amazing neat ug aspirants who are watching this video i want to tell you about one of the best apps out there for you guys to prepare for neat ug by practicing 
discussing and solving numerous questions and understanding each and every topic to the core concept. This application is called as Basidia Neat UG. While most of the other apps you're going to be seeing out there are going to be focusing primarily on learning new concepts, but Basidia is going to be focusing on practicing. Consistently practicing MCQ is one of the best ways to succeed in Neat UG. And Basidia does exactly that. Last year, Basidia had a strike rate of 91%. That means 91% of the questions of the Neat UG examination were from Basidia Neat. So basically, you can go to the application and solve as many MCQs as you want. It also gives you a perfect explanation at the end of each MCQ, which will really help solidify the concept within a very short amount of time. They also provide you with stories which will help you engage and remember the topic for a long period of time. The best part is Basidia is 100% NCRT based, so you know that you won't be wasting even a single second of your time on Basidia app. You can also appear for tests in the Basidia app and the AI generated results give you a most accurate prediction of your rank compared to your peers. And a very detailed topic-wise assessment is also given which will help you identify your strengths as well as weaknesses. There are also explanation videos which are present inside the app. Students get access to question bank, video modules, notes, mock tests and custom tests at a very pocket-friendly price of just 150 rupees per month. The best part is you can avail 10% discount using my code ANUJ10 and use the first link in the description to download the Basidia Neat app. I'm sure you will love it. So they come over here in the crossroads. So here they are asking about the prognosis. So prognosis is a word. Hai. Prognosis basically means ki what will be the result of this patient. In terms of medicine, it usually means ki is the prognosis good or is it bad? So good prognosis is something like, okay, you are going to be cured of this disease. But with respect to Abzan Gaini, here in prognosis, they actually want to mean what will happen to the baby. Will it be delivered through normal vaginal delivery, cesarean section? Is there any risk factors, high risk, low risk, whatever, all of that. So nobody presented the case over here. So that's one of the things they got wrong. This guy again is not wearing an apron and he's in hospital rounds. So probably he will be kicked out because it is the peak time of the morning. And and yeah, this guy is not following any rules whatsoever. Good thing that even though he has not reviewed the case sheet, he was given the case sheet, so an opportunity presented itself. Ma'am, uh, ma urine is showing grade 3 protein. Uh, this is patient's third trimester, or uh, blood pressure count is 140 by 100. They are exactly painting a picture of preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is a condition where your blood pressure does not remain stable in pregnancy after 20 or so weeks, so that causes distress to the fetus. Uh, the main reason behind preeclampsia is that, uh, see, you, you imagine this is the uterus and this is the fetus growing inside. The fetus needs to derive oxygen from the mother's blood, right? So what will happen if there is poor connection between the metal and the fetal side? Uh, the mother will raise the blood pressure so that there is more blood flow to the fetus that will cause hypertension in the mother. But at the same time, fetus will still be undernourished. That will cause a lot of problems with hypertension, uh, mostly affecting your kidneys as well as your liver and so many different organs at the same time. So she says that urine is showing grade 3 protein. I think grade 3 is more than 3 grams of protein in the urine. So that is very, very high. Uh, and that definitely signifies preeclampsia along with hypertension. So the definitive treatment of choice for preeclampsia is to terminate the pregnancy. Uh, termination of pregnancy does not always mean like we have to kill the fetus or something like that. Termination of pregnancy just means delivering out the fetus so that the conditioned pregnancy which is causing the hypertension is reversed. Naturally, as, as soon as you deliver the baby, the blood pressure stabilizes, the protein urea is gone and everything becomes naturally stable. Preeclampsia is one of the things in which we don't want the fetus to go into distress. So we're naturally going to prefer LSES, that is cesarean section. That's what I so she just said that if delivery has any cuts, lagai ho, so we have to repair them immediately. The cut that she is talking about is called as an episiotomy. Episiotomy is a procedure that is done in which the vaginal wall is cut along with the skin so that it easily facilitates the delivery of the head of the baby or the breech of the baby, whatever. It's a very, very common procedure done in a lot of the females, especially the females who have uh, delivered the baby for the very first time through normal vaginal delivery. As soon as episiotomy is done, we suture the thing completely. Three layers of suture. We first suture the vaginal mucosa, then we suture the muscles and lastly the skin. So a couple comes to him for some reason and he has to do an examination of the female but the husband is not in the room. Uh, so he just does the examination without uh, the presence of the husband and usually any sort of examination you have to do in any person. From MBBS times we are always taught that there are four things which has to be present uh, for a successful examination to be conducted. Before uh, reporting any findings of the examination we always say in the same way the examination was conducted in a well lit room. It was done with the consent of the patient and all the procedures were explained properly and if it's a female then we definitely have to mention that the patient was a female hence we had a female attending present with us so that's the fourth point it was done under the presence of a female attendant that is extremely extremely important for basic stuff like taking the bp or the temperature does not matter but for anything invasive you have to have some sort of person present in the ward with you Dark, sir. Dark, sir. 
So here what hap- what is happening is that a lady has got severe uh, labor pains and she is complaining that she's got pains. So the standard procedure would be to admit her because of the number of pains because you can't really stop labor once it started. Once the membranes are ruptured, once the uterus starts to contract, there is no way to stop it. We can give tocolytics and everything, but once it has started then it's no point to stop it especially when the fetus is mature and everything. ये लीकिंग हो रही है मतलब देर इज फ्लूड कमिंग आउट ऑफ द वजाइना प्रेसिपिटेड लेबर इज अ टर्म दैट वी यूज इन ऑप्शेटिक्स इट बेसिकली मीन्स दैट द फ्रॉम द ऑनसेट ऑफ द लेबर टू द डिलीवरी ऑफ द बेबी दैट्स जस्ट अंडर थ्री आवर्स सो दैट इज प्रेसिपिटेड लेबर so the umbilical cord which they have shown i don't think it's correct so when you see an umbilical cord it will be completely like wrapped around like this so this one is extremely plain to be true but they have to show it for theatrical purposes yes uh, so one of the things which i want to tell you over here is that the delivery of baby does not mark the end of labor the end of labor is when the placenta is separated placenta is delivered out that's when the labor process ends so the this is just stage 2 of labor when the baby is delivered so traditionally right now of course people will be clapping because there is a birth taking place but now what we have to do is we have to do something called as active man management of third stage of labor so in here we're going to be doing control for traction we're going to be trying to you know uh, make the placenta deliver out faster so it does not just end here he might have stayed there for another 10 minutes and 15 minutes and tried to you know manage the third stage of labor report ke hisab se aapke semen count aur vaginal cavity mein koi dikkat nahi hai सो रिपोर्ट्स के हिसाब से सीमेंट काउंट एंड वजनल कैविटी में कुछ डिफरेंस नहीं है बट इट कुड भी यूट्राइन पैथोलॉजी इट कुड भी एन ओवेरियन पैथोलॉजी इट कुड भी अ फेलोपियन ट्यूब पैथोलॉजी दैट इज कॉजिंग इनफर्टिलिटी सो आइडियली वी हैव वॉट एन एंटायर पैनल ऑफ इन्वेस्टिगेशन टू डू बिफोर डिक्लेयरिंग सब बडी दैट यू हैव दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम और यू आर प्रॉब्लम फ्री सो इनफर्टिलिटी इज डिफाइंड एज वन पीपल आर ट्राइंग टू कंसीव बट फॉर द वन ईयर ऑफ पीरियड दे हैव बिन ट्राइंग एंड दे हैव नॉट बिन एबल टू कंसीव सो येस दैट्स द थिंग विच इज गोइंग ऑन ओवर हियर ही हैज बिन ट्राइंग फॉर वन एंड हाफ ईयर बट नथिंग इज हैपनिंग सो वन ऑफ द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉजेज ऑफ इनफर्टिलिटी in india is tuberculosis there could be also uh, fibrosis there could be also ashman syndrome that that happens after there is repeated time in instrumentation of the uterine cavity so there's a lot of reasons for infertility but since the semen count is normal we can pretty much declare that the male is okay the female has to have some sort of problem so yes vaginal wall inspection does not just rule out that there is no problem here kaadya ko placenta pre diya hai look placenta previa basically means that the placenta is not where it is supposed to be so normally it atta- it attaches near the fundus uh, so fundus is the topmost part of the uterus but in placenta previa it could attach to the walls near the cervix part so in here uh, she says that she has got placenta previa which is just over the cervix so that's level that's i guess grade 3 placenta previa and is uh, alice forceps is a tissue holding forceps which we use to hold tough structures no, i don't know wait a minute idhar idhar ho yaar prostaglandin my man's does not do prostaglandin i am very very shocked so prostaglandin is something uh, which is used as an abortifacient uh, because it causes the uterine muscles to contract and uh, there are a lot of indications of prostaglandin apart from this which this guy should have already known because he is a jr1 and obsen gynae and mbbs student also knows this because this is one of the most common questions they ask us in viva they give us the drug so this is prostaglandin what do you use it for so there are like five to six different indications like uh, ripening of the cervix in induction of labor then uh, to prevent postpartum hemorrhage and uh, also for, to prevent gastric ulcer so yeah varied amount of uses but uh, yeah this should have been known by him that prostaglandin is one of the things they give us as a vaginal pessary to stimulate the abortion so there are different types of abortion it is used in almost all of them so incomplete and all of that so those are all the medical scenes of the movie i hope i was able to explain them to you properly overall what do i think about the movie uh, to be honest as far as just watching it for fun it's it's, it's a good movie but uh, as far as a movie critic would say it w- it's not really that good of a movie uh, but overall this is what we expect from indian cinema so it's very fun to watch one time watch you'll probably forget about it the moment you just leave your screen uh, but yeah it was really fun to react to it and i really hope that you enjoyed if you did please make sure to subscribe to the channel and also smash the like button and yeah comment down below what was your favorite part also use the first link in the description to download bestia use code anuj10 to get a 10% discount thank you so much it's been anuj i'll catch you in the next one goodbye